And welcome back to this edition of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast brought to you as always by the GSMC Sports Network. Hope you guys enjoyed that very kind of weirdly shocking segment that I just did. I hope you, if you do choose to bet on the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest that you choose wisely, may the best eater win in that competition. But coming up next, we're going to continue our player profiles, like I said, with a guy who I really want to see get back to what he knows he can be. And that is, without further ado, Austin Eckler. But before we begin that, actually, I do want to remind you yet again to consider leaving a tip or donation at the link gsmc.cloud. There's a huge support to both me, my fellow podcasters, and ultimately the network as a whole. So anything you leave is greatly appreciated. But without further ado, like I said, let's jump right into the fantasy player profile of Austin Eckler. And as we saw... He moved from the L.A. Chargers, where he had a very inconsistent roller coaster-like start to his career, and now he's a Washington commander on a new-look offense that might rely on him a bit more. So let's just jump right into his fantasy stats for his career, shall we? 1,211 fantasy points. His best season was in 2021, where he garnered 273.8 fantasy points. So as you can see, for a running back, he certainly can put up a ton of points for you in terms of point production. However, if there's one thing that correlates with Austin Eckler, it's his injury history. His injury history really kind of has derailed what he brings to the table. And last year was no different. He had an ankle sprain in week one. After the injury, he only he did average a ton of touches with 16.1, but only 69.8 total yards per game. And he thus ended up being RB28 in terms of fantasy points per game. However, his touches and volume of touches did not go down. He was 8th in target share last year and 19th in yards per route run. So as you can see, he still has the ability to create in both the running and receiving game. And people rely on him. Justin Herbert relied on him last year when he was healthy. But in terms of explosivity and elusiveness, that declined. As a lot of running backs do when they're injured. He's only 38th in yards after contact, 46th in missed tackles. And fantasy odds are projecting him to have kind of a weird and rough season. Only 520 yards for five touchdowns for Austin Eckler. Although 432 yards through the air and two touchdowns. And another uh, stat of note for you guys to think about. He only finishes the running back one four times post-injury. So as you can see... There is some modicum of concern whenever a guy like Austin Eckler gets injured because he definitely does lose that explosivity that we know he can bring to the table. But now, if there's any silver lining to that, is that he's no longer an L.A. Charger. He's a Washington commander, and this commander's offense definitely has a new feel to it. They're going to be breaking in a rookie quarterback in Jaden Daniels, who also brings that dual threat ability to the t- table. They already have a kind of established running back in Brian Robinson Jr., still a young up-and-coming guy who will get his fair share of touches. And they have a receiving core that's always been very exciting and might be the best part of this team in Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson. And they certainly have the feel of a team that A, might be trying to piece things together, but be looking to be true contenders and i think they could lean more towards the latter here i think that the nfc is wide open i think that the nfc east is always a crapshoot no matter what anyone can win that division except for maybe uh the giants this year i'm sorry giants fans but uh i really do believe that the washington commanders are kind of undervalued and a big part of that is austin eckler now Looking at his stats, there's reason to believe that he's going to continue his decline, he's going to regress to the mean, and he's going to be someone who's kind of tossed around in the fantasy rumor mill or waiver wire, what have you. But he definitely adds a dimension to this team that will really make it intriguing and fascinating to see how they implement and utilize both him and Brian Robinson Jr. I think the key to Austin Eckler is going to be two things this year. What the Washington Commanders do in, say, early downs and what they do in the red zone. Because Jaden Daniels definitely has the potential to be 
one of, if not the best rookie quarterbacks in this draft class. I think he's in a very similar situation to Caleb Williams, where he has the personnel to immediately succeed. And looking at it from that perspective, I would think that in early downs, Austin Eckler might be more used because Austin Eckler provides that experience, that know-how in the backfield that would probably calm Jaden Daniels down a little bit, not get him too uh, confident, hyper-focused on, on the task at hand. And so seeing it from that perspective, I definitely think that if Austin Eckler truly is the early down back, he certainly won't necessarily be in the top 10 to 15 discussion. However, in the red zone, a lot of opportunities can open up for the Washington Commanders because A, you have Jaden Daniels who can take it in an RPO. You have a guy in Brian Robinson Jr. who's always a workhorse down on the one-yard line who can get a lot of those looks. You have Terry McLaurin and Jan Dotson, two of the best receivers in terms of contested catches, catching in the red zone, really paying attention to body control in those tight areas. So there's a lot of variety and uh, appeal to what the Washington Commanders can bring in the red zone. And that's going to be integral to how I view Austin Eckler because all is fine and dandy if Austin Eckler is getting his touches on early downs to just get the tempo going. But I think with a guy like Austin Eckler, touchdowns is what matters. When he was scoring with the LA Chargers, he was the most electric running back in the league, and he was rivaling Christian McCaffrey as an RB1. A lot of people saw him as 1A even to Christian McCaffrey early, uh, in the past couple of years, but as we see, the injury bug got to him, and that's not the case anymore. So in order for me to truly trust Austin Eckler, I truly believe that he needs to find some kind of control in the red zone. Because that's where a lot of his production, I think, could come from. Obviously, you have a guy in Brian Robinson who you can entrust in the red zone because he's, he's a more physical back than Austin Eckler. But I think that the key to a guy like Austin Eckler... Now, we're going to bring up his the fact that he's kind of in his twilight years and the stop in Washington could prove to just be a bridge to retirement and something like that. But in order to make this worth his while, he really has to understand his place in this team. Because Brian Robinson is someone who, if the Washington Commanders ever find themselves having to rebuild, breaking down this project that they're trying to recreate, I think that Brian Robinson is a piece you can't lose. He's going to be a cornerstone of this uh, offense for years to come. And so... Implementing a guy like Austin Eckler can be a boon, but could also be a detriment to a young running back. So there's a lot to be wary of in this Washington Commander system. And how had Coach Dan Quinn figures that out is definitely going to be something very important to watch should you decide to draft either of these running backs, not just Eckler. And so I do believe that Eckler's not as bad as people think. He's certainly not as bad as only 520 rushing yards. And he's certainly not as bad as only five touchdowns. Because Austin Eckler, one of his best traits is his explosivity. He's the guy who's going to create elusivity. He's the guy who's going to try and create yards after contact. Obviously, last year was not the perfect example of that. But he's going to try and get back to what he knows best. And that's being the Austin Eckler who can just really get out into the open field and succeed there. I think that the caveat to that is that in this Washington Commanders offense, in order for everyone to be happy, you have to realize that Jaden Daniels is going to have to have a lot of trust placed on him. And as a rookie quarterback, that kind of makes you a little bit jittery. It kind of makes you a little bit overconfident. It kind of makes you a little bit tight at certain moments. And so, if Jane and Daniels comes into this league and immediately lights it up, those worries will be dispelled. But if he's kind of uh, loose and tense a little bit, 
at how he plays. That will seep into the culture of this whole team. Austin Eckler has already seen one rookie quarterback and his success in the league in Justin Herbert, and he's seen that dynamic in the locker room. And how, what with the dynamic and the coaching staff in L.A., the culture kind of got a little bit muddled. Here, it's going to be all about his reactionary attitude towards Jaden Daniels and thus the reciprocation there because Jaden Daniels definitely wants someone like Austin Eckler in the backfield because an Austin Eckler, when he's on his game, is truly one of the best backs in the league. And I mean that sincerely. But as a rookie quarterback on a team that's expecting to compete in the NFC East semi-immediately but with the moves they made, it's really going to be telling in the, going, in the early goings for both of these players. And so, that's that for Austin Eckler. That should just about do it for him. But coming up next, we have another very interesting player profile. We switch over from running back to wide receivers. Another guy in a new home. A new home there. He might not be the go-to target. Tune in to find out who it is. We'll be right back on the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast with that segment. <laughs> 